So having done some explanation of why the law of sines looks the way it does, now we're going to do the law of cosines. Now remember, the law of cosines comes in three different versions, but the only difference is which side are you calling A versus B versus C, as long as you're labeling angles across from sides consistently. It doesn't really matter. So specifically, this is the version we're going to derive. A squared is B squared plus C squared minus 2BC, whoops, I'm missing a C, 2BC times the cosine of A. So put C in there. OK, and then the other ones would be the same thing just by changing the labels of what side is what. So I'm going to start by doing the same thing I did last time. I'm going to drop an altitude in this triangle, and I'm going to call this height H. So in that triangle on the left, I can do two things. I can take the sine of A, and I can take the cosine of A. Now, the sine of A is opposite, which is H, over the hypotenuse, which is B, which tells me that H is equal to B times the sine of A. And so far, this is the same thing we did when doing the law of sines explanation. But now what I want to do is I want to take the cosine of A. Naturally, I want to take the cosine of A because this is the form of the law of cosines I'm trying to derive. So at some point, I have to have a take, take a cosine of A. So what I want to know is what side length is adjacent to the angle A? And it's not C because C is this whole thing. But I'm just looking at this right triangle. So let's call this X, in which case this length over here would become C minus X. It's the unknown length. Uh, what I had C and I took away X, that extra bit is C minus X. So the bad news is I've introduced a new variable, but the good news is now I can say that cosine of A is X over B. In other words, X is equal to B times the cosine of A. Okay, that's just using the triangle on the left. Let's look at the triangle on the right. So in the triangle on the right, if I took the sine of B, that would be the derivation of the law of sines that we did in a previous video. If I took the cosine of B, that's a thing I could do, but it's not actually going to help us here. What I want to do is I'm just going to apply the Pythagorean theorem. So if I apply the Pythagorean theorem to the right triangle, and there's my neighbor's dog on cue, I end up with C minus X squared plus H squared is equal to the hypotenuse a squared. Now we just have to expand out this thing on the left. We end up with c squared minus 2cx plus x squared plus h squared is equal to a squared. Now what I'm going to do is wherever I have an h, I'm going to replace it with b sine a. And wherever I have an x, I'm going to replace it with b cos a. So c squared minus 2c uh, x, that's actually b times the cosine of a plus x squared, that's going to be b squared times cos squared of a, plus h squared, that's actually b squared times sine squared of a. This equals a squared. Now observe that this term right here is b squared cos squared a plus b squared sine squared a. That I can factor out b squared, leaving behind cos squared a plus sine squared a. And it doesn't matter what the angle a is. What is cos squared a plus sine squared a? It's just 1. So off at the right now, okay, that whole term of b squared times all of that is just b squared times 1. I still have a c squared. So now I've used up this term. I've used up my c squared. I have to subtract 2 times b times c times the cosine of a. And now I've used everything on the left. And what do I have on the right? a squared. And I'm done. That's the law of cosines. So just as the law of sines was not this big mysterious thing, it was just take your arbitrary triangle throw down an altitude, and express the sine of different angles against the height h to derive the law of sines. We do something very similar. It's just we throw in a cosine and a use of the Pythagorean theorem, and we end up with the law of cosines. And now you can imagine if you just relabel a versus b versus c, you can start moving around and get the other versions of the law of cosines as well. So the textbook doesn't really make an issue of these explanations, but I think it's very handy to give an explanation of why the law of sines and cosines work, because that's what math is. Math is not using a formula and plugging in and saying, you know, throwing up your hands and offering a prayer to the calculator gods that they have not misled you. Math is figuring out why this stuff works the way it does. So here is why the law of cosines looks the way it does.